If you want to make action films, it's never been easier with Unreal 5. Today, you'll learn how I created these explosive gunfire and muzzle flashes for my Godzilla short film, made entirely inside of Unreal Engine 5. And the best part? You set up the system once and Unreal 5 does all the work for you. What's up? My name is Josh Tunin, and for the last eight years I've worked in Hollywood visual effects on movies like Dungeons and Dragons, Across the Spider-Verse, and Godzilla vs. Kong. And I want to share some of the biggest lessons I learned making a Godzilla short of my own in Unreal 5. Whether you're making movies, games, or you just want to blow stuff up for fun, by the end of this video you'll have all the skills to bring your own action sequences to life. Subscribe to the channel and let's get started. So let's break down each layer of our gunfire system and create it step by step. So here are the three main components. We need our muzzle flash, we need our tracer fire, and we need our impact spark explosion. So first we need our muzzle flash, which is just a picture of a real muzzle flash. Then we need a light to cast light onto objects and into our scene. Then we need to shoot out a bullet that will collide with our environment. We want a spark impact to collide in the opposite direction. So let's create this interactive procedural system so that we can move around our gun and have dynamic impacts every single time. And to follow along, all you need is a picture of a muzzle flash. So let's start building. Let's right click in our content browser and create a new Niagara system. And let's create a new system from a pre-existing emitter. There's a couple of templates that are included with Unreal that we can start from. A muzzle flash is literally a small explosion at the front of a gun. So to recreate this, let's start from a directional burst. Just click on directional burst and press on the green plus arrow and then press on finish. Now let's name this and start with NS for Niagara system and call it NS gunfire. And now we can see our Niagara editor. This lets us create and modify particle effects in Unreal. Now we have this little preview window on the left, but it's a little limited. So I like to just click and drag this directly into the scene and use that to start building. I'm just gonna take this system, parent it to our rifle and reset the transform. And I wanna align this system to the very front of the gun. But the default behaviors here are a little messed up. So let's dive in. Now Niagara is definitely a tool by game developers for game developers. So here's a quick run through for the rest of us using Unreal Engine for filmmaking. Niagara graphs are being executed from the top of each system all the way down. So we start by spawning and modifying the attributes of our spawn particle. And then in our particle update, we add in different effects and forces before rendering it out as a sprite. And a sprite just means each particle is an image. So first off, we need to create that muzzle flash of an automatic rifle firing over and over and over again at a concentrated speed. So to do that, let's go to the very top of our system and start making some changes. Now this default system only bursts one single time. And I can tell this by recompiling this particle system and you'll notice that it restarts it every single time. So that's not what we want. We want constant, consistent, automatic fire. So instead of spawning a burst instantaneously, let's click on this module and delete it and instead replace it with a spawn rate node. This will give us a consistent spawn rate and let's set this to a value of three. This will get us started, but we need to do one more thing and that's change this loop behavior to only play one single time and instead play it infinitely. And now we have a stream of particles. Now this is super basic, but let's dive in and make it look like a muzzle flash. Now we need to get rid of all the other effects like gravity, drag, and all of the randomness here. We just want that pop of the first explosion coming out of the gun. So let's take things like drag, gravity, and forces and velocity, and even scaling the sprite size by the speed and delete all of that. So now we're just spawning a, a few small particles at the front of the gun that aren't moving anywhere and to make them a bit bigger and the size of a muzzle flash let's go into initialize particle where we can set the lifetime and particle size so let's change the sprite size over to a uniform value and let's make that a value of 60 and now let's reduce our lifetime so let's change this to direct set and give an exact lifetime and we want to set this to something really really short in a movie, a muzzle flash is only visible for one single frame. So we wanna recreate that in our own cinematics. So instead of having our lifetime set to one second and that particle disappearing after one entire second, let's set it to 0 0.05. And this will make that particle flash on and off. And there we go, now it's crude, but we do have our first muzzle flash. All we have to do is swap out this sprite 
so that it's a picture of a real muzzle flash instead of this circle. So to change that out, let's go to the bottom at our render tab and select Sprite Render. And we need to create a new material to replace our sprite. So I've already imported an image here, but let's make a simple material for this sprite. I'm gonna create a new material, call it MM underscore muzzle flash. Now let's drag in our muzzle flash image. Let's plug that into the emissive color. And then to get rid of this black outline, I'm gonna change this from an opaque blend mode over to an additive blend mode. So that muzzle flash adds on top of our scene. I'll also build in a simple multiply control that we can plug in and modify later on. And let's just call that brightness. And now let's apply our new material. And there we go. Now we have the beginnings of our muzzle flash. But now it's time to add our bullet and have it dynamically collide with our environment. So let's create a new bullet. I'm gonna select our directional burst here. Let's actually rename it. So I'm just gonna press on the F2 key and call this our muzzle flash. And now we can right click here, copy and paste. And now let's call this bullet. The only difference is under particle spawn, we'll need to add in velocity. So let's type in velocity. And with Niagara, the order really matters here, but they do a great job of telling you when something's broken. So you can just press on these fix issue buttons to fix any problems with the order there. And now in our add velocity menu, let's change this from linear to in cone. Now, a big problem here though, is our lifetime is super short. So we need to lengthen that so that bullet can cast off and travel through space. So let's go to initialize particle, which has all of our default settings. And let's change that lifetime over to a value of two seconds. Now, obviously our velocity is super slow. So we'll need to add a lot of velocity here. I'm gonna add about 1500 units and I'm gonna change the cone angle down to zero. So that there's no randomness in the direction of our bullets. Now, obviously the particle is too big, but we can change that as well. And a great module here is scale sprite size by the speed which means that we can scale our bullet to be longer in the direction that it's already traveling, which is great for bullet tracers. And if we scale this in Y, that means our bullet will stretch out in the direction that it's traveling. And as a last thing under your sprite render, you wanna change over your alignment from automatic to velocity align. Now this is great, but we need to make sure that our bullets collide with the environment. So under particle update, let's add in a collision node. Now with this collision here, you can see that the bullets are literally bouncing off that wall and traveling backwards. And if we moved our rifle around here, you can see that it dynamically collides with any part of our environment. Now this is cool, I guess, but we need to make sure that that bullet impacts that wall and then creates a burst of spark launching off in the opposite direction. So let's handle that next. So first off, let's make sure we kill that particle after it bounces off the wall. To do that under particle update, let's add in a new module called kill particles. And we wanna set this kill particles to true after our particle has collided. So we can do this by pressing on the down arrow and literally just type in has collided. And this makes it so every time a bullet collides that it dies on impact. But now we need to spawn another particle emitter for our spark impact. So let's right click in our Niagara graph and create a new emitter. And let's start from one of their presets. And this time let's pick a directional burst. So we're starting from the same thing, except remember it's spawning from the original location, not from the impact of our collided particle. So to fix this directional burst, let's just go to the sprite render and change this alignment over to velocity aligned. And that's gonna give us a much better looking impact. But how can we spawn this as soon as a particle collides? Well, to do this, we need to use something called an event handler. All this does is let the Niagara system know every time a particle collides where it happened. So to set this up, let's open up that Niagara system. So in our bullet that's firing through our environment under particle update, let's press on the plus button and type in generate collision event. And in order for this to work, you just need to go to the top of your emitter and make sure to enable persistent ID and press compile. Now this system will know every time there's a collision, but we need to make sure to transfer that information and spawn particles from the impact. So to do that in our new spark burst setup, let's press on this small stage button and add in our event handler. The important thing here is that we're looking for an event source, which we just created in our other emitter. So let's change the source over to a collision event. 
Let's spawn 20 particles every time there's a collision event, and let's change the execution mode to spawned particles. Now we just need to do one last thing under the event handler, type in collision so that we can receive a collision event. Now, if you follow it along, you should have a particle system that shoots out bullets and creates a new particle system where that impact happens. But our impact is flipped. We needed to shoot in the opposite direction. And that's super, super simple. As a last step, just go to your add velocity in cone and change that cone axis. Instead of being in the forward X axis, let's invert it and change that to negative one. And that'll just flip it around so it shoots off in the opposite direction. And now every bullet has the right impact regardless of what angle you're shooting from. Now to refine this and clean some things up, we can also add some collision to our spark impact. So now that we have everything working here, if we want them to bounce and collide with the rest of the environment, let's just go to the particle update and add in another collision node. And now not only do we have great impacts, we also have them colliding and interacting with our environment even further. I like changing the advanced aging rate after collision. So we can have that lifetime evolve twice as fast after that first collision. We're missing one key ingredient and that's adding light interacting with the rest of our environment, but it's really easy to add in. Under our muzzle flash system, let's get this set up first. And under our render tab, let's add in a new light render. Now there are some weird particular settings that you need to use here. They're not so photorealistic as the rest of the lighting system in Unreal, but it can still be really effective. What I normally do is I'll change this radius scale to something big like 64. And then in this case, I'm not going to use the inverse square fall off. This is gonna cast a ton of light into the scene, which is not exactly what we want here. So let's change our default exponent to something like 800. So it just appears around the gun itself. Now we can also change the color by adding a little bit of red into this light. So it starts to cast bright light into our scene. But you're probably wondering, can we add this to the bullet flying through the scene? And the answer is yes. You can literally copy this light render and paste it in our bullet system. And now we have a light attached to each bullet. Now I'm gonna make these a bit darker because I want those muzzle flashes to be the brightest thing in our scene. So I'll change that default exponent to a higher value. And now we can add interactive light to every layer of our scene. You can also change the particle color in that initialized particle tab so that we can tint everything to be a bit more orange instead of perfectly white. So there is our particle system, but how can we add it into our shot and decide when to fire and when not to? Well, let's talk about that next. If you wanna learn how I make big budget action sequences from home, it's all using Unreal Engine 5. And this week, I'm gonna share all my secrets in the live Godzilla Masterclass. Sign up today at unrealforvfx.com slash Godzilla, and I'll show you how to recreate all the on-set filmmaking techniques that go into your favorite blockbuster movies, even if you're not an animator yourself. You don't wanna miss out, so make sure to register today at unrealforvfx.com slash Godzilla. Now let's add this intense gunfire into a real action scene shooting down Godzilla. So let's add in some muzzle flashes onto our helicopters in this shot. To do that, I'm just gonna click and drag our gunfire into our scene and you can see right away it'll start shooting some bullets at Godzilla. Now if we want to animate anything, we have to add it into Sequencer. So let's add our Niagara system into Sequencer and let's create a new attach track and attach it to our helicopter. And now you can see we already have our particle system shooting down Godzilla. But how do we change the timing of our gunfire? What if we wanted to start it in tents and stop halfway through? Well, if you didn't know already, we can build some custom controls and menus into any Niagara system. Let's double click on our gunfire system and create something known as a user parameter. Just like in materials, we can create customizable parameters that we can change on the fly and even add animation and keyframes to. Let's start animating our spawn rate first. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the spawn rate of our muzzle flash and click on this down down arrow and can type in user, which will let us create a new user parameter. Now we need the spawn rate of our muzzle flash and our bullets to be exactly the same. We can't have some faster than others. So let's go to the spawn rate of our bullets and change our spawn rate here over to a user parameter. But now we can select the one we just created called spawn rate. Now these two are linked together. And when I jump back into our viewport, if I look on the right side, I can see we have a new user parameters area here. So let's change this over to a value of three. So we're firing off 
three at all times. But if I wanted to keyframe this on or off, I'll just go to the gunfire inside of Sequencer and let me add in a Niagara component track. This will let us modify anything inside of Niagara. So I'll add another track inside here. And now you'll see we can create a track for our spawn rate. What this means is we can start with a spawn rate of three and then halfway through our shot, we can change that to a spawn rate of zero, which would turn off our gunfire halfway through. Let's slide this to the right. And now we can see that gunfire stops halfway through. And now we're ready to render out our scene. Now a big roadblock a lot of people face is that they can't get the same result every time they render out of Unreal, especially with Niagara. But if you follow this, you'll get the same results every single time. All you need to do is go to the edit, plugins, and enable the Niagara Sim Cache plugin. If you enable this, inside of Sequencer, we can click on that Niagara component and add a Niagara cache track. What this will do is give us a little record icon here. And if we press on the record button, it'll go through our sequence and create an exact position for every single particle in our shot. And this will make it identical if we ever go back to re-render this later. Now we could render this out as is and just render this out of movie render queue, but I like to isolate each layer of my scene and composite them together. Now, most people overcomplicate isolating render layers inside of Unreal. Basically, all we need to do is just disable or hide everything that we don't need. So hide any extra levels or geometry that is not being used. Once your viewport matches what you want with everything turned off, then you can go to render. So once we have a render where our muzzle flashes and impacts are isolated, then we can start combining it together. But how do you go from particle system to Hollywood level visual effects? Well, that's where the next most important step comes in and that's compositing. Compositing is just Photoshop for video. But for us, it's where we're gonna add in lens flares, lens dirt, and anything that makes it look better by adding this layer on top of our original render. I wanna share a couple extra techniques I use to take these shots even further. I also rendered out a couple of extra spotlights that mimic the same position and lighting of our muzzle flash. By combining this custom light with the other muzzle flashes, I was able to art direct that lighting while still getting custom dynamic particle effects from the system without animating anything myself. And now our scene feels more intense. And you can make these look even better by having these muzzle flashes interact with smoke and rain. You'll notice in this shot where we're firing from the cockpit of a helicopter, that if I pause on any dynamic frame here, that the muzzle flash is lighting up all the surrounding rain. Now, how do we do that? Well, first it was by laying out real stock footage of rain that I could place in my 3D scene, but then it's by isolating that muzzle flash layer, blurring it out and multiplying it against that rain stock footage. And by multiplying these two layers together, we get the dynamic interaction frame by frame without putting in a bunch of extra work. And again, I created extra layers of dynamic interactive light so we could feel all the sparks and muzzle flashes bouncing and trickling past Godzilla. And in the end, I was able to bust out this shot in less than a day by combining all these different elements together. So I hope you can use these to level up your own cinematics and action scenes right after this video. But now it's your turn. If you follow along step by step, you can add gunfire and interactive effects into your own cinematics and action scenes. But look, if you're new to Unreal or you've struggled learning in the past, it doesn't have to take six months or a year to master Unreal. In fact, you can learn everything you need to know in just 21 days when you join Unreal Fundamentals. We'll take you from a complete beginner to an Unreal filmmaker by creating environments and films step by step. I'll give you every cheat sheet and template I've ever created so you can use my own templates on your own freelance and professional work. Get the shortcuts and start learning today for just 99 bucks over at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals. Subscribe to the channel for more Unreal and filmmaking videos just like this, and I'll make sure to see you in the next video. Peace.